Let's take a look at creating axes in SOLIDWORKS and Creo Parametric. In both CAD packages, axes have a number of uses, including constructing other datum features or reference geometry, creating patterns, and also defining mates in SOLIDWORKS when assembling components, or constraints in Creo Parametric when you're doing the same thing. And in Creo, you can also use axes for locating whole features. In SOLIDWORKS, be aware that there's the concept of temporary axes as well. If I go to my visibility drop down menu, here we have an icon for viewing the temporary axes. And temporary axes are axes that are created in cones, cylinders, and revolved features. And you can use these temporary axes for defining mates when you are locating different components. But let's say I wanted to create my own custom axis. Let's turn off the temporary axes. To create a new axis, you will go to the Reference Geometry dropdown. Here we have the Axis command, and it will open up a Property Manager. And you can see that there are five different methods of creating axes inside of SOLIDWORKS. You can use a line, edge, or axis, two planes, two points or vertices, a cylindrical or conical face, or a point and face or plane. And you can either select geometry first. Based on what you pick, you'll notice that each of these options is different. You will end up automatically selecting the method that you want to use, or you could pick the method first. Let's start off with creating one through an edge or an axis or a line. Again, this axis option is in case you wanted to select one of those temporary axes. But I'm going to pick an edge in the model, and it automatically selected the appropriate option. Let's hit the check mark, and so that way we have the axis created. Let's go back down to the reference geometry, and then pick axis once more. And this time, I will start off by picking a flat surface, and so it automatically selected the two planes option. And then I will left click on this face and we're getting an axis at the intersection of the two entities. Oops, hitting the wrong key on the keyboard. Let's hit the check mark for that one. For the next one, let me once again go to the axis command. And for two points of vertices, well, let's select this vertex and then this vertex over here and we'll get the axis. Let's hit the check mark, and once again, let's go to axis. This time I will, just to be different, pick the cylindrical conical face option, and then pick this cylindrical surface, hit the check mark, and we get our axis. And for the final method here inside of SOLIDWORKS, let's go to axis. We've got a point or a face or a plane. Well, I need to have a point. Let me cancel out of here for a moment. And then I can create a sketch. And let's sketch, say, on this surface. And then I will create a point, locate it here. And for simplicity, I'm just going to hit the check mark and not dimension it. Let's then now go to the Features tab. Let's go to Axis and point, face, or plane. I'll select the point and then the face or plane, and we're getting it through the point and normal to that face. I will hit the check mark. One other thing to note about your different axes that you create, let's say I go to axis three over here, you have drag handles that you can use for resizing how big it appears on the computer screen. But you can also use the right mouse button to go to auto size in order to get it back to the original size. So that's how you can create your different axes inside of SOLIDWORKS. Let's jump over to Creo Parametric. For creating axes in Creo Parametric, one thing to note is that you have two different workflows. One is called Action Object and the other is called Object Action. What that means is I can click on the axis command and it'll open up a dialog box for selecting the different references. And depending on your references that you select, 
well, the method will be in the background. And the way that SOLIDWORKS does it, where you have those five different methods, that's kind of similar to how Pro Engineer 2001 and earlier did it, but now you just have a dialog box where you pick the different references that you want and then select how you want to use them. So in this case, here we have it going through that particular edge, and that's all the information that we need. Let's click the OK button, and now we've got the axis created through that edge. Also, let's take a look at the other workflow, which is object action. What that means is I can select one surface, one flat planar surface, hold down the control key and select another flat planar surface. And we're going to get a mini toolbar, and from the mini toolbar, we can choose to create the axis. And since it had enough references, it just created the axis in the model without needing to open up a dialog box. Now we can use that axis for different purposes. But let's go to the axis command, and I will select one vertex, hold down the control key and select another vertex. So it's going through both of those vertices. Let's click the OK button. And another method, going through a cylinder or a cone. Well, this time I will just select the cylindrical surface and then pick the axis command from the mini toolbar and the axis is created. And also we can create it through a point on a surface and normal to the surface. So similarly, I can create a point, locate it on a surface. Let me select some offset references and then hit the OK button. And with that point still selected, I can click on the axis command, hold down the control key, and now we have it going through that point and normal to the surface. So that's how you would perform the five different methods that you have inside of SOLIDWORKS. But be aware that you have some additional methods inside of Creo. And to unclutter the screen, I'm going to hide a bunch of these different axes just to simplify things. And that's good enough for hiding them. So in this situation where I created a point and then made the axis through the point and normal to the surface, well, you do not have to create a point first. For example, I can go to the axis command and then just pick a surface and then use my offset references. Let me pick these two surfaces, plug in the dimensions that I want, and then click in the OK button. And that way the axis will be created normal to the surface with those offset references without needing to have a point in there. Let me hide this one as well. For the next method for creating axes, I'm going to jump over to an empty part. And let's say I go to create a sketch. Let's click on the sketch icon after selecting a plane. And I'm going to sketch a rectangle just to make something very quickly. Within the sketch feature, you have a datum group. And if I create a center line, just put it over here. I'm not going to bother dimensioning it. Let me hit the check mark. And now in this particular situation, that center line ended up creating an axis in the model. Similarly, let's say I create a feature like an extrude with an internal sketch. I can create axes in that feature. Let's create extrude, and for the plane that I want to sketch on, let's sketch on the plane called top, and I will once again just sketch a rectangle. But in addition to sketching the rectangle, I'm going to drop in some points from the datum group. And I'm just going to click randomly over here in a bunch of different places. Then I will hit the check mark, and then we will create the extrude, hit the check mark, and because I was doing an internal sketch in an extrude with those different points, axes were created in the extrude feature through all of those different points normal to the sketch plane. Let's hop back to the model that we were in previously. Another way of creating your different axes in the model. Let me click on the axis command. So I showed how you can select a cylindrical surface and it'll go through the surface. Let me remove that. In addition, you can select a circular edge in the model and by default, it'll go through the center just like if we had selected the cylindrical surface. But alternatively, I can choose that I want it to be tangent to that circular edge and I don't have enough references yet because 
there are an infinite number of axes that can be tangent to that edge. I will hold down the control key and select this point. And so now it is tangent to the edge, but going through that particular point that I selected. Let's click the OK button. So there we have the axis created. And for a couple other different methods that you have inside of Creo Parametric, let's go to the axis command. And I'm going to select this point and then hold down the control key and select this conical surface. And so now I'm getting an axis that goes through the point and is normal to the surface. But we have a drop down. Instead of being normal to the surface, we can be parallel to the surface. And it's actually parallel to the axis going through the middle of that cone. But let's go back to normal and then click the OK button. And another method that you have, let's click on the axis. This time I'm going to select a point that does not lie on the surface of that conical surface. Let me hold down the control key and pick the conical surface. So right now we're getting it through the point and parallel to the surface. But once again, I have a drop down and I can choose normal to the surface. And actually it's going normal to the axis through the center of that cylindrical surface. And be aware, you can do this with cylindrical and conical surfaces. Let's click the OK button. So there we had a bunch of other different methods for creating your different axes. And just like in SOLIDWORKS, you will automatically get axes created when you have cylinders and cones and revolved features. Let me uh, edit the definition of, say, this one. And just want to show you that if you go to the Display tab, you have the ability to adjust the outline. And you can grab the different handles in order to adjust the length of the feature. You can plug in a numerical value as well. But you also have the ability to change the method for adjusting the outline from size to reference. And that way I can pick geometry in the model. And that geometry will determine the size of the feature. Let's click the OK button. And so there we have a bunch of different axes created inside of Creo Parametric. So I hope you get an appreciation for some of the similarities and differences between creating axes as reference geometry in SOLIDWORKS and Creo Parametric. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.